Hello and welcome to another Tech Distractions video. Firstly, I wanted to thank those of you who have recently subscribed to the channel and left me a bunch of comments. I'm still on the ground floor with a lot of this YouTube stuff and I appreciate the support and look forward to creating more content as I go along. Today we're going to look at a project where we're using a mixture of affordable and easy to find parts to construct a budget Windows 98 gaming PC with expansion options. We're basing this project on the AMD Socket 754 platform from around 2004. These parts are very easy to find on the used market and only the motherboard and CPU need to be sourced secondhand. Everything else can be purchased as a new part if you want to. For graphics, we're sticking with the integrated Unichrome graphics from Via. This is because this is the cheapest possible option and is remarkably useful with Windows 98 and DOS. The board also has an AGP slot which can be used for future upgrades. The case we're using here is a generic micro ATX case from 2014, sold to me as the Shaw Mini 1 for about 30 Australian dollars from MSY, who at the time were a high volume and relevant reseller for cheap components over here. The case is super light, but not flimsy, and is sized more for ITX boards, but it can fit a larger micro ATX board like this one, featuring the AMD Athlon XP3200 on socket 754 with 512 megs of DDR400 memory, AGP and PCI expansion slots, along with everything else you'd expect from a board of this era. And while it's a snug fit, everything lines up without much hassle. The SSD bracket is mounted underneath the motherboard for easy access, and this side also can access a CPU backplate and enable pass-throughs for cable management. This case comes with a USB 3, but using a cheap converter we can easily connect this to a USB 2 header on the motherboard. We can then connect the other USB 2 and front panel audio. The panel itself is way too shiny for the camera, but luckily is not interesting, just clicks into place once I move the USB cable out of the way. As this project is focused on cheap and easy, we're doing away with floppy disks, optical drives or emulators. Instead we're using good old USB sticks and a free program called Rufus to prepare them. The first one is a Windows 98 SE boot USB using the standard floppy image from BruteDisk.com or WinWorld. The second one is prepared as a FreeDOS boot disk and then we use Windows Explorer to copy the installation media and utility files such as our DOS USB driver as well as games. First we set the USB hard drive as the first available boot disk. We also check that the initial display is on board. Then check SATA is enabled and in IDE mode. This gives us the best compatibility with Windows 98. Also make sure that USB 1.1 and 2.0 controllers are enabled along with the keyboard and mouse support. We plug in the 98 SE boot USB and boot up. The boot disk will be A drive. Partition the SSD using F disk. And because this hard disk is greater than 120 gigabytes, we need to create two partitions of 50% capacity each. This will give us two times 120 gigabyte partitions, despite what FDisk and DOS report at the time. After a reboot, we use FDisk switches MBR and CMBR space one to create the master boot record. Now we format the C drive with the S switch to copy the DOS system files. We then format D drive. After everything is complete, we eject the USB and power off. Now we insert the FreeDOS USB and boot up. This time the boot disk will be C drive. Copy the pre-made config.sys and the USB drivers to D drive, which is the SSD. Eject the USB and reboot. Now we are booting from the SSD using the pre-made config.sys loading the USB drivers. When prompted, insert the FreeDOS USB stick once again and press enter. The FreeDOS USB will now be the E drive. X copy the contents of the files folder and use the S switch to copy subdirectories. The copy should now use the USB 2.0 transfer speeds in DOS, significantly faster than what you would get with 1.1. Rename the c.config.sys to config.usb in case we need to use it later disable USB 2 in BIOS. We will use USB 1 for the legacy support. Now we install Windows 98 SE and follow the standard processes, rebooting when necessary. During the hardware detection phase it's common, with newer parts, to get a few lockups. If this happens, just reboot and let the process kick off again. During this build it happened twice, but I've had other builds where it's happened three or four times.
Next, we use the files folder we copied earlier and install the via chipset drivers. Now the video driver. And for the Unichrome IGPs, I find the S3 Chrome Metal 4.5 drivers to work really well. The setup program seems to never work properly though, and I just use the extracted files to manually load the driver. Windows will detect this as Unichrome Pro, which is fine. For DirectX I'm using 9.0c which comes with the unofficial service pack 3. To keep it simple, I extract all the files in the universal service pack and then manually run what I want to run. Installing the universal service pack is not mandatory, but it might save some hassle later. Lastly the Realtek AC97 driver which will give us sound under Windows only. Now onto the games and benchmarks. First up is the classic Quake 3, playing the 4DM66 demo using the normal quality preset. I recorded results at stock and with a modest 10% overclock. We get very good frame rates with 16-bit colours, and while there is a drop off using 32-bit colour, you can still easily play this in 640x480 at a good frame rate on the Unichrome. Expendable. Again, we're using normal quality preset and we can see good frame rates even at the higher resolutions. Like Quake 3, Expendable is a fast paced game. You want to have your settings optimizing at at least 60 frames per second. 800 by 600 is a good choice and there doesn't appear to be a big penalty for going to 32 bit colors. Now we have a game released in 2006 Trackmania Nations ESWC Edition. This uses DirectX 9 but still manages to play on the Unichrome, but only just. Using the minimum presets at 640x480, we can get over 60 frames per second, and this is impressive given this game was designed with much newer hardware in mind. Midtown Madness 2 is another title that seems to push the Unichrome. Using the low presets we get a good frame rate, but performance really drops off when you max out the settings. This game probably needs a bit of settings tweaking to get a good mix of resolution and graphics features. Turok 2 seems to run really nicely on the Unichrome even at a high resolution during the benchmark runs. One thing I do find with Turok 2 is the frame rates during gameplay do vary greatly. While the benchmarks results show some good numbers, I'd suggest playing this one at a lower resolution like 640x480 in 16-bit to get a more consistent experience. I ran a few synthetic benchmarks just for curiosity. 3D Mark 99 has a few issues on the Unichrome as V-Sync is forced on a number of tests, this tends to throw off the final number. 3D Mark 2001 SE doesn't like the Unichrome at all, possibly due to the lack of hardware TNL. So, time for a wrap up. Period correct Windows 98 parts are becoming less common and more expensive on eBay. This project has shown that you can use cheap, easy to find parts and make relatively modern Windows 98 SE rig that will play just about everything. Yes, in most cases at a lower resolution or lower detail levels, but games will run quite well. If you need more powerful graphics than what the Unichrome can put out, you can still grab any suitable AGP card and use this instead, something like a GeForce 4. If you want to play some legacy DOS games, you can do that too. Just find a PCI-based sound card like the ESS Solo 1. The AMD Ithon XP is suitable to slow down and throttle, and even run some speed-sensitive games like Jazz Jackrabbit and Test Drive 3. It's very flexible. Well, that's about it for this video. I hope you found it interesting and I hope it might inspire you to have a go at Retro Build yourself. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I look forward to catching you in a future video. Bye for now.